name is Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and welcome to this video on all you need to know about condensing pipes. So before we get into this video please could you take some time to subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to tell you when we're uploading videos. And hopefully you know by now it's Mondays and Wednesdays. So as usual Let's stop waffling and let's get on with this video. Now, way back in 2005, we went from non-condensing boilers to condensing boilers. And it's helped to reduce the carbon emissions of the UK. But what is this condensing boiler and what was the difference between condensing and non-condensing boilers? Well this is what this video is hopefully going to tell us and it's also hopefully going to show us how we get rid of this condensate which condensing boilers make. Now back in 2010 and again in 2018 when we had the beast from the east the temperatures in the UK dropped to around about minus 18 degrees in some places. Now this caused a lot of problems for our condensing boilers where the drains were installed on the outside of the building. So this resulted in significant uh, call outs for gas engineers for boilers which were broken and a lot of complaints were received from a lot of manufacturers as well because nobody could cope with getting out to all these boilers where the condensate pipe was frozen. So to combat this the HHIC, or the Heating and Hot Waters Industry Council, the building regulations, uh, the British standards and the manufacturer's instructions have released information to hopefully help gas engineers combat this uh, condensate pipe from freezing and hopefully reduce the risk of it. So, what is this condensate and condensate pipe then? So, the main function of this condensate pipe is to take this acidic water, which is from the combustion process of the boiler, safely away from the property via the internal drain system and then onto the sewer. So, this condensate is produced when the boiler is burning natural gas. So, the byproduct of burning natural gas is carbon dioxide and water vapour. So what happens is, because these boilers are efficient, the products of combustion exit in the flue are lower than the dew point of the water. So it turns that water vapour back into a liquid, which we need to get rid of. And because of the condensate being part of the combustion process, it becomes acidic, which is about the acidity of tomato juice. A typical hour long running of a condensing boiler will make about two or three litres of condensate. That all depends on the kilowatt rating of the boiler. A 24 kilowatt would probably make two litres, where a 30 kilowatt would probably make three litres. But the boiler, what it does is, instead of trickling out this condensate, which they used to do when they first came out, and that was causing massive problems with freezing, they kind of dump about 300 millilitres of water in one go through a siphon um, trap, which we're going to look at in a minute. And that also helps the um, condensate pipe not freezing. So this two or three litres of condensate can actually make about 1,200 litres of water a year. So you can see this boiler can produce a hell of a lot of condensate which we need to get rid of safely via our drainage system but also we don't want to cause any problems with it freezing and stopping the boiler from working. So this is one of the kind of first condensate traps what came out from Ideal. So this is from an Ideal ICOS and this is one off a first gen Logic, and you can tell that because it has a, a removable bit on the bottom here, which isn't on the new version. So this is kind of evolved as well. So uh, that's how they've changed. That's one of the first ones to this one now. And these now have to have a 75mm trap in there 
to help all this getting rid of the condensate and to stop smells and products of waste getting back into the boiler. So uh, that's how traps have evolved. So when it comes to having this condensate pipe installed, there are certain criteria the gas engineer needs to follow to make sure it complies with one, the building regulations, two, the British standards, but most importantly, number three, the boiler manufacturer's instructions. So the minimum size we can use for this condensate is overflow pipe or 21.5 mm OD or 19 mm pipe ID. But we can only run that for a maximum of three meters internally and we cannot run it externally at all now. External condensate pipes need to be a minimum of 32 millimetres and again only run for 3 metres but they have to be insulated with type 0 insulation according to the building regulations but we're going to look at that a little bit closer in a little while. We'll come back to the insulation shortly. So what material can we have this condensate pipe made of? Well I've said it's got to be plastic and we use overflow pipe internally and it has to be standard waste pipe, could be outside. We cannot use copper pipe and we cannot use steel pipe for a condensing pipe because it completely rots away. Now this is what happens to copper pipe when you use it as a condensate pipe. Can you see that? My uh, very good friends Ben Green and Paul Cherry brought me this last week and they gave me the inspiration to make this video <laughs> because uh, this is not very good is it? So that's why we can't use copper because it just corrodes it and yes this guys this was on a boiler condensate pipe and uh, why did the customer not notice that? <laughs> Anyway, cheers Ben and Paul for bringing that in and giving me the inspiration to make this video. So, we can use polyvinyl chloride or PVC. We can use unplasticized polyvinyl chloride or PVCU. We can use polypropylene or PP. We can use chlorinated polyvinyl chloride or PVCC. And finally, we can use ABS. <laughs> there is no way I am going to say what ABS is. I'm going to put it here. <laughs> so this is the proper name for ABS. <laughs> Can you say it? Because I can't. Now, because this condensate drain is working under gravity, they have to have a minimum fall. Now there's two sizes you'll see banding around for the minimum fall. The one for most of the manufacturer's instructions for the boilers is 45 millimeters per meter, but the building regs say 52 millimeters per meter. So you can kind of use both of those. Now this is what we mean by it. So the blue line you can see here is the center of the pipe. So you can see from this section here, We've drawn a parallel line straight with our one meter. And you can see from that straight line to the center of the pipe is our fall. So I have a 52 millimeters per meter or 45 millimeters per meter. So hopefully that helps with what we mean by the fall. So it's from center to center within one meter. And the clipping distances need to be no more than 0.5 meters or 500 millimeters um, horizontal or one meter vertical. But if you've got a flexible connection, that has to be clipped every 300 millimeters. So those are to the British standard 6798. So when a gas engineer is replacing a boiler or doing a brand new install, the considerations for the condensate pipe need to be really looked at. And the main thing we need to do is try and install this condensate pipe internally and run it to an internal soil stack, which is the preferred method. 
Well, they can be run into internal waste systems such as waste coming from kitchen sinks, wash basins, baths or even shower trays. But these wastes going from internal systems have to be a minimum of 32 millimetres in diameter. And any waste pipe connected to a condensing boiler has to be, if it's outside, insulated with UV rated insulation with a minimum wall thickness of 90 millimetres. Yes guys, according to the British standards, the Burley regs, the manufacturer's instructions and the HHIC, we now need to insulate our external waste pipes from condensing boilers and if it's connected to a kitchen sink you need to insulate that pipe coming out of the kitchen wall as well. How many of you do that then? It also needs to be terminated below the grid but above the water level and cut to a 45 degree angle and have a leaf and debris guard over the top of it now. And this is all to stop the chilling process. So freezing cold wind chill factor wind blowing across the top of the grid and freezing the outlets of the drain. So even when an engineer goes out to service or repair a boiler, they should be looking at the way the condensing pipe has been run. And if it is run outside and it's done in just overflow pipe, or it's done in 32 waste pipe and it's not insulated, then the engineer has the responsibility to inform the responsible person that the uh, condensate pipe is not to current regulations and should be upgraded. No, it should be upgraded. You don't need to pin them down on the floor and tell them that you've got to have it done. No, 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 you've just got to kind of inform them it must be done. What if we're connecting into a soil stack or a rainwater pipe? We'll take the soil stack first. Obviously, what have you got going down a soil stack? Hmm, could be a bit, mm, bit smelly. So, what we have to do, as you can see here, we have to put a 75mm trap into the waste pipe, the 32mm pipe coming off the soil stack. If the trap within the boiler isn't more than 75mm, then we have to put an air brake in there so we don't get the mess going into the boiler. I've seen a couple of boilers where the mess has got inside. It's not nice. So that's if we're connecting to a soil stack. Now, if we're connecting to a rainwater pipe, we definitely need to do an air break outside. And this is important because if it gets blocked up down at the bottom or it gets frozen, then you could get all that water then just going straight into the boiler. And again, I've seen a couple of uh, boilers where they're filled up right to the top in the um, combustion chamber with water where it's been connected to a downpipe or a rainwater pipe. So just be careful when you're connecting into them. So when they say best practice is to connect to a soil pipe, just bear that in mind if the boiler's trap is bigger than 75 millimetres, you've got to put an air break in. But then does an air break then, if you've got the air break inside the house, is that not dangerous then? Because you could be getting products of combustion coming out of the air break. Well you shouldn't do if the trap is 75mm. I always read the manufacturer's instructions of the boiler to find out how and what we need to do to be safe when we're connecting into a soil stack. So, that's soil stacks and rainwater pipes. Now, what if we haven't got a waste pipe within three metres of the boiler? And there isn't anything external neither. Well, we can use one of these. So this is a condensate pump. So what happens is, the boiler condensate pipe goes into there. When it gets to a certain level, a little pump inside here is activated 
and pumps it out to drain via this little plastic pipe. A couple of things with this though is it has to be interlocked with your boiler. So if anything happens to this, it stops your boiler working. Because otherwise you get all this condensate pouring out all over the place. So these are also very good if you're in places such as a basement, the boiler's in a basement, or you've got a basement flat, something like that, where the boiler is actually lower than the drain system. So you can actually use this then to pump it higher up. Because it does go quite a distance up. Always check your manufacturer's instructions though for your maximum lengths. And always check your boiler manufacturer's instructions how you're going to interlock it into your boiler to stop it working. Well, the boiler stop the boiler working if this stops working. So that's one way you can do it, which is a condensate pump. There are also some purpose-made condensate pumps where you can actually put your discharge pipe into them also. But you can't just use any condensate pump, you've got to use a specialised one which will take the temperature of your discharge water also. So, also helps when you're uh, installing a boiler in a flat or a basement and the drains are above. You can actually put your discharge pipe in there also. Another way you can do it is a soak away. So, this soak away, what is it? Well, the name's pretty self-explanatory really. What we're doing is we're using the ground to soak away the condensate. It's as simple as that. So the way we do this is by the use of limestone chippings. And what this limestone does is it neutralizes the acidic water and allows it just to go into the ground and cause no harm to any plants or animals, basically. But one of the things we've got to do is be very aware that this acidic water can corrode and disintegrate cement. So we need to make sure we follow the measurements behind me here to uh, make sure we don't uh, let the wall fall down. So let's have a look at these measurements now. So the first one you can see here is how far it needs to be away from the house. So it needs to be a minimum of 500 millimetres away from the house. And you can see it's 32 millimetres insulated going through the cavity wall. It then runs down into the drain itself. So our hole is 400 millimetres deep. But our actual purpose made soak away tube is 300 millimetres minimum in length. And the holes there are evenly spaced of 25 millimetres apart in all directions, but at least 50 millimetres off the bottom. And you will put that at the front of the tube. So it's directing the condensate away from the house. So uh, that's basically how you install a soak away. I've done it on numerous occasions. They're pretty cheap to buy and they're purpose-made plastic tubes, really, which you fill with limestone chippings. But remember, when you're servicing a boiler where it's got limestone chippings, you need to check the limestone chippings every year to make sure they've not all disappeared, because otherwise you're just going to be putting acidic water back into the ground. Now, it's becoming pretty common now that uh, engineers are installing their condensate pipe with their pressure relief valve in the same system. Instead of taking the pressure relief valve outside, they're discharging it into the same pipe. And BS6798 doesn't really say much about it. It just basically says there's two ways of doing it. There's one way which is actually done by the manufacturers inside the boiler and I know Wiesmann do this, where they combine the blow-off and the condensate inside the boiler. I can't think of any other manufacturers that do it, but if you do know them, put them down at the bottom in the comments. And the other way is to do it externally. And BS6798 says, refer to the manufacturer's instructions of the boiler to see whether they allow you to join in 
the blow off and the condensate. And again, I can't remember seeing that anywhere in the manufacturer's instructions for the boiler. But if you do do it, just bear in mind of the flow rate of the pressure relief valve compared to the condensate pipe and the temperatures. So your condensate water is going to be a lot less than the 100 degrees your blow off could be doing. And there are a couple of manufacturers who make special um, tongue dishes for the blow offs. So Tesla and Hotton. And again, refer to the manufacturer's instructions for the um, tongue dish air brake and, and follow them to see how you would connect them in. But I always, if I'm doing it, connect it in this way where I'm using waste pipe rather than, which I've seen quite often, the actual condensate pipe where they've connected the discharge, the blow off into the condensate pipe. But British standards don't say much on it and neither do the building regs. It all says refer to the manufacturer's instructions. And I know it can get a few engineers into trouble if you're not following the manufacturer's instructions. So just be wary of doing this kind of system. Make sure, check with the manufacturer first that you're allowed to do it. Because I know a couple of engineers who've got in trouble for not doing it. Now let's talk about this insulation which I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Now a lot of engineers use this Classo nitrile rubber insulation, I think that's how you say it. But there's a couple of problems with that. First of all, it's not UV protected. So second, you've got to protect it and you've got to use like a special paint to paint on it and you have to do it twice in within a few weeks. You have to follow the manufacturer's instructions with it. But it stops then the rubber cracking and turning to dust, basically. But there is another product on the market, which I've actually done a full installation video because they sent it me for free ages ago. And that is... This stuff. So this is... Uh, From Condensate Pro. And it's designed to go over a 32mm um, solvent weld. You can also get it for uh, your 21 and a half if you want. But uh, yeah, I've done a full installation video on this. Shows you exactly how to do it. And the good thing about this stuff is, even though you can actually get some paint to paint it, you don't need to keep painting it. You only need to paint it uh, when it's looking a bit tatty. So this is the no-brainer really for engineers if you want to insulate your condensate pipe which runs outside. It's all sorted out for you. It's a little bit expensive, um, but you've got to comply with the regulations now. And this certainly does comply with the regulations. So again guys, it's a no-brainer. So if we need to insulate it, you can use the uh, class zero, the rubber stuff, but you've got to protect it from UV. Or you can use this stuff. There are other products on the market. You can use trace eating. But trace eating still needs lagging on it. So you could put trace eating inside this. Uh, Worcester also, years ago, produced this condensate. I can't remember what it's called now. Some kind of condensate bottle which clips onto your flow pipe of your boiler and they say you don't need to insulate your pipework then because the flow pipe actually warms up your condensate and it dumps about 500 millilitres of water in one go but I don't know whether that still complies or whether they actually still sell it I need to make a look, I need to have a look at that, don't I? But if you know you can still use it, if you're from Worcester and you know you can still use it, put it in the comments below and tell me exactly uh, if it can be used or not because I can't find any new stuff on it to say it can or it can. Anyway, if you've got any other comments about this video and you like the lagging or you hate lagging or you don't think you need to put lagging in or you don't think you need to comply with the regulations, then let's stick a comment down below and find out exactly what you guys think. So that is pipe insulation and what we can and what we can't use. So check out my video on Condensate Pro and how to install it. And it'll give you more information on that. 
And that's the end of this video on condensed pipes. So, as usual, if you've liked this video, why don't you give me a thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. If you've not subscribed to my channel, then please subscribe because it helps. And again, don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to tell you exactly when I'm uploading videos. And I guess you know it's Mondays or Wednesdays, hopefully. All I've got left to say is, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and I hope this video's helped you to understand the new regulations about insulating condensate pipes. So cheers, guys, and I'll catch you on the next one.